Great. It's all you. When do you want me to start? Can you come back? No, you can go now. You're good. Start now? Yep. Morning, everybody. Welcome to Yoga Flow with Robin Smith. Thank you for joining me today. We're going to put an emphasis on stretching, balance, and core. We're also going to put an emphasis on no injuries, no new injuries. Let's not worsen any existing injuries. Take care of yourself. If this class is not for you, feel free to drop out. Feel free to modify. It's not going to be a competition. We're going to do the class in an easy mode today. Uh, the classes that I normally participate in here at Bayside and elsewhere, I use props. But I'm not going to assume today that any of you watching have a yoga block or have a yoga strap. So I will be modifying a little bit and I'll appreciate your uh, patience and uh, Let's try to have fun as we do maneuver through today's class, taking care of ourselves. And let's start by adjusting our breath and breathing, finding that, for me, a good morning meditation helps relieve stress, helps me deal with stress as I encounter it throughout the day. Um, so seated in a comfortable position, whatever that is for you, and that may be seated in the chair. If so, um, please make advantage of, of a chair, anything that puts you in comfort. But thinking about those tenets of a good posture, the head lifting up, chin level, shoulders roll up, back and down. And let's start our yoga breath and breathing. Let's start it deep down in the abdomen. Feel the expansiveness of the belly as we pull the breath up. Filling the lungs up to and through the sternum, right on up into the shoulder blades. Bring their shoulders up high. And this is going to be our touch point for starting the exhale. So as we release the shoulders, we release the exhale. Culminating with the bottom of the breath, we can take a hand if we so wish, push in on the belly and complete the exhale. Our hand is placed, we'll feel it start to rise with the next full and complete inhalation. Inhaling deeply, exhaling deeply. Remembering the exhale is just as slow, deliberate, and complete as your inhale was. Using this breath and breathing and meditation to quiet and calm the mind, to leave everything outside that belongs outside, and just keeping ourselves centered on our backs. Let's start to wake up and warm up the body as we keep that breath and breathing going. I'm going to ask you if you'd bring your hands up to the side, please. And as you inhale, whoa, what's happening? I'm inhaling and my arms are rising up. My fingertips are reach, reach, reaching for the top of the ceiling. I turn palms out and away and on the exhale, slowly lowering the arms. Fingertips at the bottom of the breath. We're going to ricochet off the floor and come back up with the next inhalation. So keying the arm movement and warm up with the inhale, exhale. And if you wish, you can circle the wrist, you can make a fist, you can wiggle the fingers, anything that you want to do on the way up, you can pulse at the top, taking note of your position and where your shoulders are before turning palms out and away and releasing down. Let's continue to work on the shoulders as we do some modest shoulder rolls, bringing shoulders up, back and down and switching up forward and down. Quickening the pace both ways. Up and back, back and forth. Very nice. Clasping, if you would, the alternate elbows. Shoulders come up high by the ears, release three times with a very deliberate up, which goes such as boom, boom, boom. 
Nicely done. Then a little freestyle rocking here, going ahead and letting the hips, letting the buttocks, letting the feet and ankles come up off the mat. Just a general warming up of the torso and the trunk. As we come more into our practice and stretching. Nicely done. Now, if you would be so kind as to take the forearm through the right hand off to the side, planting down, making sure that the left hip is still drawing down towards the mat, raising the left arm, and the gaze is up at the ceiling and the left fingertips. Now we can creep those right fingers a little further away from the torso, but we want to maximize the benefit of this side stretch by making sure that the left hip and buttock are staying in reasonable contact with the mat. And we'll come out of this, we'll just go over to the other side, where it'll be the left forearm through, fingertips down, twisting at the waist, gazing up, right arm is raised. Breath is flowing. And pushing back up, coming back to neutral. Bringing the arms out, up alongside the ears, bending at the waist, coming down, but staying up on the fingertips. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do some side stretches all similar to what we just did, with the result being that we want to keep the buttocks and the hips firmly anchored. So we're going to do a little cram walk over to one side, lining the center of the sternum up with the bent right knee, keeping the left buttock anchored to the mat. We're going to walk the fingertips away from that right kneecap. Now we've not surrendered the back yet. When we do so, we will do two things. We will take this left hand and left hand only and extend it further away from the right hand and we'll bring the center of the sternum to rest on the bent right leg. So here we go, surrender that back, enhance the stretch along the left side by moving the left hand out and away further from the right knee. Embrace the stretch, pull down with the left buttock, walk back, come back, you guessed it gang. Same thing to the opposite side. Line the center of the sternum over the bent left knee. Staying up, back is rigid, not surrendering the back at the present time. When we do decide to surrender the back, again, we'll bring this sternum down on the bent left leg, and we'll extend out further with the right hand, right hand only, like so. And concentration is on keeping the right buttock down on the mat, enhancing that stretch all along from the belt line up to and through the right hand and arm, and we'll come back, we'll walk it back, walk those fingertips out in front, and it's your choice you can stay up or stay down. If you wish and feel like you've got the extra flexibility, you can go ahead and drop the forehead down towards the mat, and then walk it back up and coming back. I think we need to do just a little bit of work on our necks. Shoulders and necks are going to be where we're going to hold a lot of stress. So let's start by dropping the right ear to the right shoulder. Let's take, if you would, the left hand and circle behind the small of the back, bringing the right hand to that left shoulder and actively with the right fingertips Push pull that left shoulder down as the right ear drops to the right shoulder. And go ahead and release up. Same thing, opposite side, reposition your posture. Nice, tall, firm, straight back, head lifting up, dropping the shoulders and dropping left ear to left shoulder. That's the only thing that's going to move at this time. Now we will take the right hand circle behind the small of the back. The left hand will come to the right shoulder and do what? 
actively push pull down, enhancing that stretch along this side of the neck. And go ahead and release back up. Now I'm going to show you a couple of variations of this just that you can add to your home practice. So you can drop over 90 degrees. You can allow the head to fall back on its axis and pivot over to the side. And you can tuck chin to notch and chest and then round and roll over, giving you some different variations of that same neck stretch. Very nice. So let's go ahead. If you're ready, and as you're ready, position ourselves on our mat with the legs out in front of us. And give ourselves a little nice comfort level, get comfortable here. I am primarily, now that we've warmed up, primarily going to be doing uh, most of the asanas and poses that I've done because uh, I want those that are watching to be comfortable uh, in familiarity, those that have taken my classes, I want you to be familiar with what we're doing today, as opposed to trying to grasp what you may be seeing me do on the screen for the very first time. So we we'll break there, and let's bring let's bring just that left leg up. Okay, right leg is extended out now. When you hear me say toes, toes is going to be uh, my shorthand way of communicating with you to do a, uh, a dorsiflex with your foot. A dorsiflex with the foot is when the toes come back towards your trunk. There's a plantier flex where the toes are pointing to the wall ahead of you. We want to do the dorsiflex back, or as I call it, just toes. So, that's kicking the right heel out, left toes are searching for the wall behind us. I'm going to take, with the graces, I'm going to take this right hand and grab the outside of the left foot. So right hand across the body, outside of the left foot, and I'm going to extend that left leg. I'm going to correct my posture, making sure I've got the head lifting up, chin level, taking the benefit of this. Now, if your knee is bent, I see, uh, I think it's Mott's knots. If you can't straighten the leg, go ahead and work through this posture with the knee back. Whatever your comfort level is, staying within yourself, staying injury free, I'm going to ask you to bring the left hand and let it join with the right hand on that left foot and leg. And then two-part movement as we sweep the left arm behind us, we're going to twist at the waist and gaze at the wall behind. So the gaze is going to be at our fingertips behind us, pretty much got our arms and legs in line with each other. And then we're going to bring it back. And what we're going to do here is we're going to keep the movement of this left leg. We're going to bring it over to the right side. Now, you may need to reposition some with this right leg because our goal is going to be to stack our knees on top of each other. So try to get the best stacking of the knees that you can, bringing the arms up to shoulder level, arms up by the ears, toes, so it's a dorsiflex with the right foot, unhinging at the waist and bringing those fingertips down to the right toes, perhaps top of the foot, could be the shin, the ankle, or at the knees, getting a wonderful stretch back of the calves, keeping the knees flexed, stacked. And on the exhale, let's go ahead and release up the arms float back hands to heart center. So now we've got the legs crisscross. We've got to do something with them. What we're going to do is we're going to whoop, we're just going to flip this left knee up, planting the left foot to the outside of the extended right leg. We're going to do side twist, 
and we're going to do them both ways, so it doesn't matter which way you decide to start. I'm going to start with the right elbow hugging the left knee into the chest. Left hand is going to plant close to the buttocks behind. Remember, it's toes with the right foot. And I'm going to twist at the torso and look over the left shoulder to the wall behind. And releasing the breath, bringing everything back, taking this left foot, landing it now in a figure four or a P shape inside the extended right leg. Remember, dorsiflex on that right one. What we're going to do is we're going to twist by coming down, placing, if you would please, the right forearm through the back of the right wrist, down on the right leg, and twisting at the waist, gazing at the upraised left hand and arm. And the left arm falls, joins the right hand and arm. Back is somewhat rigid, inhaling, exhaling as we go through this. Exhaling, coming up, sweeping the arms, hands to heart the sun, come down, extend the legs out, shaking it out, and preparing to do the same on the opposite side. So this time we're going to bend the right knee, left leg will stay extended with the toes pulling to the wall behind us going to bring the left arm across the body, grab the outside of the right foot, raising it up again. If it's 90 degrees, that's fine. If you can extend it all the way out, even better. If there's nothing wrong with this posture, recorrect, bring the right arm up to the left hand, holding that foot and leg up, toes on the left, Foot again, pulling to the wall behind you. And two part movement as we swivel behind, gazing at the wall behind. Right arm comes back, rejoins, and we crisscross the legs. So here it comes in where we have some movement with this extended left leg because the goal is to get the right knee over top of the left knee as close to a straight on stack as you possibly can. So once you achieve what for you is your comfort level with this position and the toes are pulling to the wall behind. Correcting your nice tall posture, arms shoulder level, arms up by the ears, unhinging at the waist, bending forward, releasing the hands down to a place of rest on that left leg somewhere. It'll be on the toes, top of the foot, ankle, shin, knee, whatever's comfortable for you. Feeling the stretch that you want to feel. The stretch will be centered along the back of the calf. And bring that back up, arms up overhead, float the arms down, hands to heart center. What do we do here? Remember, whoop, just gonna bring that right knee up so the right foot is to the outside of the extended left leg and we'll do our twist as mentioned earlier to the opposite side i'll be taking my left elbow hugging that right knee in right hand is going to plant close behind giving me that tall posture twisting at the torso gazing over right shoulder to wall behind
and go ahead and release and come back. Physically pick up that right foot, plant it inside the upper or lower thigh of the left leg, the right knee is down, the toes are pulling to the wall behind, arms to shoulder level, up by the ears, unhinging at the waist, and doing a stretch. It's really similar to like a track man stretch, something that you're going to see at the pen relays or any outdoor sporting events that way. Go back to your breath and breathe and finding some solace and relief in the repetition of the inhale and the exhale, maybe being able to get a little more elasticity or a little more endurance, or maybe some rest from your breath and breathing as you go through. And sweeping the arms back up. Bring them down, hands to heart center. Let's bring those legs out. And we just release. Relax here a little bit. Let's go ahead, if you would, please. Placing your feet this, let's say 12 to 18 inches from the buttock. And we're gonna do cat-cow stretches. Now I'm sure we'll do these in tabletop, but we're going to do them in this position right now which allows us, uh, the emphasis is going to be on pistoning the upper torso through the knees as the knees spread apart. So as we thrust the torso through the knees, knees go off to the side, and then we fall back, we hold ourselves up by our hands on our knees, we tuck the chin to the notch and chest, and we get that arch in the back, moderate with our breath and breathing, pulling ourselves forward, knees go out to the side, our gaze can be up or straight ahead, just as we flex in through cat-cow in this position. And one last time. And on that last time, go ahead and lower yourselves all the way down onto the mat. Take a little breath, a break, a little water break. I'm going to switch to a 90 degree position uh, to your viewing audience. And we're going to go through some bridge postures. Now, some of these bridge asanas, I'm going to ask you to lift the heels or the feet off the floor. Now, I know that everyone can really raise their leg up high. I'm going to ask you to concentrate on just lifting that heel two or three inches off the floor. If it's too challenging or you start to cramp, by all means, don't participate. Do what is comfortable for you. But the theory behind with the leg extended out to its uh, entire length and just by hovering it over the floor the feeling is that you're working harder because the leg weighs more being out there than it does when it's up here so you've got this weight here coming down to the hips we want to concentrate on different muscles so go into your favorite bridge position which is with the heels normally, say 12 to 18 inches from the buttocks, palms are flat down, gaze is up, and when you're ready, my fine friends, as you feel the knees pull to the wall in front of you, the lift is going to be the pelvic. So we're lifting up, then we're breathing, we're staying up, we're dropping down, perhaps staying down or dropping down and coming up, or maybe we're staying up the entire time. We also might be clasping our hands under our box, scrunching our shoulder blades together and getting up high. So whatever's good for you, stay up as long as you wish, drop down when you wish, rejoin or take a break.
And let's go ahead and release down. Take a wee bit of a pause. I'm going to lengthen out my right foot. And I'm going to keep the left knee bent. And we're going to do that one leg bridge where I'm going to ask you to just hover that right heel two or three inches. As I say, if you're more comfortable coming up, by all means do so. But just try to enjoy the challenge of this. Go ahead and replant, lower your bridge, extending left leg, left leg only. And going back to your bridge, and again, hovering that left heel two to three inches off the mat. Please. Replanting, slowly lowering down one vertebrae at a time. Coming out of your bridge. Let's go back to the original bridge. Coming up. And this time I would love to ask you to come up on the balls of the feet, lifting both the heels up. Stay up as long as you wish, but if you feel any sensation of cramping, go ahead and release down and take your bit of rest. So now we're going to add a little bit more to the bridge sequence. So say if my heels are at this point, maybe eight to 10 inches from my buttock, I'm going to walk my heels away from my buttock just a little bit more. And I'm going to go up to the bridge and I'm going to notice the difference that this minuscule amount of moving the feet away from my buttocks makes as I can do the bridge posture, and then I'm going to lower back down. And I'm going to lengthen, again, the distance that the heels are from the buttocks, changing entirely, and coming up to the bridge again. Again, if you feel any cramping, go ahead and drop down. And now, extend both legs all the way out, and then back it up just about two or three inches. So your legs are going to be just about all the way away from your buttocks that they would be, but you're going to back them up just a wee little tad and then come back. So you're almost in like a reverse plank here. Notice the difference that that makes in the backs of your legs and what's going on. And if you feel cramping, go ahead and release, lower down, hug those knees into your chest so we can counter. And give yourself as good a hug as you can. You can pull the knees into the chest, perhaps clasping the forearms across the shins. You may be inclined to lift your head, bring your forehead and chin towards those knees. Reach, adjust, and go back to your breath and breathe it. If you have raised your head, go ahead and lengthen the crown of the head away from the shoulders as you extend those high seven vertebrae in the neck and release yourself down to the mat. Go ahead and drop those feet down. Take a wee bit of a pause. Now we're going to drop both knees and legs in synchronicity from one side to the other. So we're just going to do like a little windshield wiper type movement here as we're getting our rotation, dropping everything one side to the other. And releasing, lengthening out. And stretch those fingertips. So really, really, really stretch yourself out. Have those fingertips pull into the wall to your side. Feel the breath, feel everything going. Coming back, grabbing the knees and rolling yourself back up. I'll get good for everybody. I'm hoping the best. Taking that nice posture and with the arms out and the fist to the wall on one side, 
lift one foot and then the other. This would be where if we had the straps, you could benefit from using the strap. But I'm going to ask you to try to go into your boot post here to elevate both legs. Crown of the head lifting up back nice and strong. Go ahead and replant. Put those legs off to the side. Come to table. And table, release the buttocks back to the heels. Go to child's pose. Take a wee bit of a pause. Come back up to table. And remember that cat cow that we did when we were uh, in the seated position. Now we're going to do what is the normal cat cow. And I always start by dropping my tummy to the mat, tailbone tips up, and my gaze is up. So I'm trying to create this U with my frame. I counter this by tucking chin to notch and chest. Pelvic tilts forward. Oh, get that nice scared Halloween cat look with the back. And releasing down, tummy to the mat, tailbone tips up, gazes up. And work through this cycle as you will and wish. At your own rate and pace, alternating the breath and breathing. And pausing in neutral. Going to do a side twist here. My friends, I'm going to ask you if you would, as you twist to the right, raise your right arm up, gaze at those right fingertips, and then watch that right hand as it threads under the left arm, but bringing right shoulder, right side of the face to the mat, left arm is up, left elbow bends, left hand comes to the small of the back, correcting with the side of the face so we're not putting pressure and stress on the neck. And go ahead and breathe. Left arm is up, left hand plants on the mat. Push away with authority as you unthread and end this side the same way we started gazing up, replanting, coming back to neutral. Gaze again is down, so we'll do the opposite side. Left arm is up, gaze is up. Left arm cycles through, threads under right armpit, left side of face to the mat, right arm is up, right elbow bends, back of right hand, small of back. Nice full breath of breathing here. Right arm up, right arm plants to the back, pushes away with power. We unwind, we come back, and we go back to the challenge pose. Come back up to that table, please. Round toes, tops of feet under. We do down dog. My assumption is going to be that we all know the down dog pose. What we do is as the knees go rigid, the lift is the pelvic. We drop and lower the head. So we're dipping down the head and neck or dipping down through the shoulders. And from down dog, we can cycle a little bit if we wish, dropping the heels down towards the mat and staying within ourselves. Whatever feels good for you. Let's walk the feet forward, maybe about a foot each side. Go into a little froggy crouch where we do a shortened down dog. So the idea here is to have the front of the sternum resting on the top of the upper thighs. And we do this in three quick bursts. We Pop up, back to the little frog crouch, pop ourselves up, back down to the crouch, come back up, and then we step back and do our down dog. Go ahead and drop back down to the table. 
bring the buttocks back to rest on the heels and just take a brief pause in child's pose. Ladies and gentlemen, let's come back to the table. Let's round those toes, start your feet under, and once more, down facing dog. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pivot, pivot over here sideways. What I'm going to ask you to do is come out of your down dog just by dropping the knees and hovering the knees. Don't have to do any more than this. And then go back up. Positioning the left foot to the left side, repositioning the right foot so you can center that and make that your weight bearing leg. As we lift the left leg up, you can lift it as high as you wish, keep it low, you can bend the knee, do whatever it is that you wish to do. And then bring that left knee up between the hands. Left foot is going to go off to the side, right leg is going to extend out long. We're going to come up, pushing our chest up and high, and then we're going to release our upper torso down on that bent left leg. Now, we're not participating that much in this posture. We're going through our breath and breathing sequence, and what we're allowing us to do is we breathe in and we breathe out, is maybe we can get some more flattening more release. This is a pose of posture that you can hold for many, many minutes and when you're doing your home practice. Very easily done, very restful. We plant the hands, right toes, round under, and we come back to plank. We come back to downward facing dog, right foot to the right side. Left foot now is going to take on the shoulder, holding us up as we lift the right leg up to a reasonable point, and then we bring that right knee through. So we've got the right knee forward, right foot over to the left side. Our gaze is going to be up. You can clasp the hands behind the back if you wish as you lower yourself down onto the back. And once more, returning to your breath and breathing sequence, allowing yourself to fall and flatten. And just enjoy the intensity of the stretch, the release. It's good for sciatica, good for movement freeing the hips. And then replant the hands, left toes round under. Why? So we can go back to plank. And let's chaturanga down as we drop knees, chest, and chin down. Toes stops the feet point away. Let's come up to upward facing dog, rounding under, downward facing dog. Knees come back down, child's toes. From child's pose. Let's come up if we can. This may not be comfortable for everyone to have this portion of your lower legs extended out. Um, might be something that you can do by wrapping a blanket or something, uh, doubling up on your mats. But I just want you, if you would please, be able to go ahead and take your hands to the lower back and be supportive. And let's do some type of back bend here. For the idea is we're going to thrust the sternum up and it's going to fall back, staying within the comfort range of taking care of our backs. Maybe your hands are at prayer in the rear. You might be able to windmill your arms back and bring your fingertips to your heels. Maybe yes, maybe no. And then come forward. Sweep those legs off to the side. Come back to a seated position. What I'd like for you to do is bring the left arm up to shoulder level, 
left arm up by the left ear, left elbow bends. You're going to take the right hand to the left elbow and whoop. Can you notice this extra movement that I'm able to get? This may not be accomplished by everyone, but certainly give it a try. Right arm from shoulder level drops, right elbow bends. And what we want to try to do is interlock the fingers or touch the fingers. If you were using a strap, you might find yourself in this position. Keep after this, you will find that it improves. This be a great exercise for people to do before they play golf. We'll go ahead and release down, release down. Right arm up by right ear, right elbow bends. Left hand to right elbow does what? Woo! Gives that extra movement, lowering these fingertips, making it a little more easier to accommodate the interlocking of the fingers or the touching of the fingers or whatever we can find. Back of the head is pushing back against the upraised right elbow. And again, go ahead and breathe through this sequence and release out. Feel good. Bring the arms out in front, which crisscross one elbow over the other. Bend those elbows and try to marry the hands together. And then release. Come back. Try to marry the other hands together. And go ahead and release. We're going to wind down today's session. Um, I'd like to do something friendly if we have uh, the time and the opportunity to. Uh, so let's uh, take advantage of laying flat down on our mats. If you would, please. Choice is going to be yours, my friends. Whether your arms are out in front, like so. I tend to put mine behind the back. I'm going to keep everything from the belt line to the toes and tops of my feet down on the mat. And the lift is going to be the gauge is up, trying to get these ribs up off the top of the mat. I'm going to stay up as long as I can, drop down, come back up, whatever it works. And then I'm going to release down and give a wee bit of a pause. Because the next part of this cycle is everything that we just lifted will stay down on the mat. So you guessed it this time, ladies and gentlemen, as everything from the belt line to the crown, the head stays down. The lift is the toes, top of the feet, the ankles, the shins, the knees, lower thighs. Toes are pointing away. And release down. And give yourself a wee bit of a pause. Third and final portion is we're going to try to make the frames look like this. Trying to get this effect of balancing across the front of the hips by lifting both the upper and lower torsos together. So as you will wish, coming up, staying up, releasing down, staying down. Take a little bit of a pause. Round two stops the feet under. Back to downward facing dog. Back to table. Flip the knees off to the side. Come down onto our buttocks. We're going to close out the session. We're going to ask you to go into corpse posture. I'm going to stay in the seated posture. Corpse posture will be just whatever works for you, um, laying flat down on your mat and going into a gentle meditation as you release your body, think about your intention of your practice today, feel those parts of your mainframe that have benefited Think about those parts, perhaps, of your skeleton that the next time you work through a session, you may need to be more gentle with. 
But anyhow, relaxing, feeling your body, feeling yourself fall and melt down into the mat. Enjoying just the presence and sense of your breath and your breathing. And after you've been there for a little bit, maybe make some gentle movements with your wrists and ankles, perhaps some, just some subtle wiggling of the fingers and toes. Bringing just a little sense of being back in the here in beautiful Bayside. And I'm going to ask you, if you would, please, to turn to one side and rest there, letting the blood pressure stabilize before you come back up and you join me in this seated posture. So from our seated posture, we're going to go back and we're going to explore our breath and breathing, getting a good sense. And maybe what we might want to do is take our fingers and give ourselves a nice little gentle massage into the bottom of the foot. Maybe you want to do a little cradling, maybe a little barn door just to see what kind of flexibility and movement you've added. Same to the opposite. Go ahead. Don't be afraid to dig in there hard. Give it a nice massage to the bottom of the foot, perhaps cradling by doing a little bit of the barn door, noticing your flexibility. It's been my distinct pleasure to be visited with you all today. I very much enjoyed it. I'm going to ask you to please help me close today's session by doing the yoga seal, dropping these fists deep down, nice, Extended sternum, chest, head lifting up, chin level, shoulders back and down. Ladies and gentlemen, the bend is at the waist, the forehead is to the mat, the release up. That was Yoga Flow with Rodney today. Thank you so very much. See you.